Hey everyone, Rodney here at Cleves Tech, and today I'm going to return to the topic of poses with stable diffusion and using focus. I've done other videos that cover different ways of doing poses, but I have found another great tool that I want to show you. And this resource can also be used with other tools which offer open pose, but I'll be using focus to demonstrate today. When you have a specific pose in mind and can't seem to get the results you want with just a text prompt, that's when the image prompts can help solve the issue, especially with more complex poses. Although some poses can still be difficult with image prompts, I have an online tool I've been playing around with for a while now, and I figured I'd share it with you. This will allow you to create your own custom poses or even edit one of the thousands available already. First, I'll cover quickly how the image prompts work in focus. If you're unfamiliar with them, I do recommend some of my previous videos on the subject for a little more in-depth coverage. Now, when you check off input image box and at the bottom in focus and the bottom left, it opens up this new section, the image prompt section. We're gonna be working in here under the image prompt tab. You also wanna go down to the bottom left and check off the advanced. That's gonna give you more options, which we're gonna be using. Your first one is your default image prompt, which you had already. That was what you're seeing here. If you put an image in there, the style and the look of the image is gonna be transferred over and influence your final. We're not gonna be really using that. We're gonna be using the Pyrocani and the CPDS. Those carry over the structure of the image that's in the box. The last one is the face swap. We won't be covering that today. I do have videos on that as well. So as far as how Pyrocani and CPDS work, I'll give you a quick rundown on that and then we'll jump into the posing tool that I have. So I generated this image recently, so we'll drop that in there. I'll use that as a reference. I'm gonna have that on Pirate Canyon. Now you can check all this right in focus to see what it will do if we go into the advanced section, developer debug mode, under the control tab, there's a debug preprocessors. If we click on that and we have this selected for Pirate Canyon and hit generate, it'll go ahead and generate the Pirate Canyon image first. We can see what it sees. The same thing will happen when you do the CPDS. What that shows is the Pirate Canny is using lines to outline all, base, all, the, all the lines in the image. The CPDS converts it to black and white. I do have another video that does cover that more in depth, but that'll give you a general idea of how those two bring the structure over. So they both do it differently. And depending on the image, sometimes one works better than the other. Now, as far as the poses go, that comes down to posemy.art. There's no .com, it's just posemy.art. And it's an extremely useful tool for artists for drawing. I discovered a little while back, I've been using it more and more. It's not perfect, but it's probably the best tool that I have found so far to come up with poses and not have to do them all manually yourself. You can take an already created pose, edit it. They do have paid plans. I'm not using the paid plans because I find most of the stuff I use it for can be done with the free stuff. If you use it a lot, it probably makes an awful lot of sense to, to pay for it and it'll help support them. Now, on the site, they do offer, there's a lot of features they talk about. They have animations, poses that you can choose. You can adjust all the poses to meet your needs. You can rotate. You can export to different formats, including open pose for the tools that offer open pose support. If you pay for it, you do get some extra features like saving for your own your own poses and everything else. They do have a pose reference section, which you can go through down here. There's a lot of ways to navigate through. They do also have the ability to search for poses. Once we go into the actual app, when you click on open pose my art, this is what you have. And once you're in here, I'm not gonna cover every tool that's in here. If you've used any other programs, 3D modeling, anything like that, a lot of those, a lot of these are similar tools. Your right mouse button will pan around, your middle scroll wheel will scroll in and out, left mouse button holding that down will allow you to rotate. Then up at the top, you can change the models. Now, you will notice a lot of these are only for the premium paid users, but I find you don't need to necessarily use a specific model. Um, it can make certain things a little easier, but overall, I find that that's not quite as important. Focus will overcome any of that sort of stuff usually. 
So if we were to add one of these in, we could drop that in. And now we have them both in here. The other thing is you can add objects. So we can take this box and use that as an object. Obviously that can be used for stable diffusion for it would, you could say it's a table or something like that. And that'll help with those sorts of things as well. We also have pre-made scenes that they have plenty of, and you can open more in here. That's the one thing that I find is a little bit, they have different ways of navigating through the poses and stuff. You play around with it enough, you'll figure it out. Um, add image is a premium feature, so I'm not familiar with that. Screenshots, we can lock the camera up here. You can create your own custom camera positions so you could keep changing between them. Now, once we have our objects in here, once we click on them, you get more tools down here, or you can uh, move it, rotate, scale, create groups, duplicate, plenty of other things. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. We're gonna go ahead and I will delete in here lighting, so you can change your lighting. I don't find I really need that for the most part, but if you do have other objects and stuff, you could use that to help influence as well. But we're talking more about poses here. Once we have the model selected, and if you click anywhere on the model, you can kind of rotate between the different tools as well. Or you can just use the menu down here. And also the first one you have down here is animations and poses. You can select through here, find what you're looking for. Now they do have, you'll notice, zero to five uses per session. As you go through here, that'll get used up and you won't be able to choose another one unless you're a paid account. But if you just refresh the page, you can. I'm not sure you, the purpose of that, but just understand that you do have the search option. And now this is for animation. So you could choose an animation and let's find a better one here. So we'll take this one. Now, it'll keep on cycling through, but down here you can choose anywhere along here. And then we could use our tools to rotate, find the spot that we want. And then we could export at that point if we wanted to. So that's how the animations work. If we go into poses, similar idea, you can go through the poses. They have different categories, dynamic emotions, lying down, close that let's go to the move however you want to do it that's pose my art now once you find the pose that you want you have the export feature so we're going to go with this one just to start off with let me um get the angle i want let's say we want to go with there now we go up to the export you set your size here that you want, the width and the height, where you um, end up. Now this is the top edge up here. It's hard to see the bottom edge, and then we can get that in frame if we want to. Now you have different options here. I'm not gonna cover all these different options because most of these, some of these we're not even gonna be using. I find exporting canny or image are the two that work best. This one, I'll go ahead and export the image. Now we have our image exported. I'm gonna go into focus and I will find my image here. And then I'm gonna set the proper size over here for my image. And I'll use CPDS for this one. A man sitting on a barrel. And we're gonna hit generate. Okay, now we have our man sitting on a barrel and say they came out pretty close to what the um, pose was. Now, the one thing I do find, I get slightly different results with these where there's no backgrounds or anything like that. Sometimes it varies. I seem to tend to have to give it more instructions. If I had just asked for that in the image, I probably wouldn't get the wall behind things like that. It could be out in the open. so. Now, as far as what Pirate Canny would do on that, we should probably get similar results. 
Okay, and we have our results with Pirate Canny. And my experimentation so far has been that I'll usually, I, I get much better results from the CPDS when using those images. But if you download the Pirate Canny image as well, so let's go into here and let's uh, download the Pirate Canny one or, Okay, and there we have our results using the Pirate Canny or the Canny out export. And you could also use that with the CPDS. You're gonna get similar results. In my experience with all of these, I found for the most part, CPDS works the best for me. Varies depending on the image. So I do, if I don't get the results that I want, I will try the other one. Uh, it's the same with the type of image. I prefer, I find the other image, the regular export image, with CPDS works the best, then the Canny image with CPDS seems to work next best. And then can the Canny image with the Pirate Canny works not quite as good. But I've had some images that came out better using the other methods. So, so these two were using the same um, Canny export. I still think the two on the left, which are CPDS came out better. The ones on the right here are the CPDS, and the ones on the left are the Pirate Canny. Now, one thing you're gonna wanna be aware of, and this may have more to do with my systems, uh, depending on your settings. I think it has to do with my display settings because I am i can't see anything half the time. So I have to have everything, all the text larger. So I think that sometimes impacts some of these sorts of things that I run into that I don't hear about other people running into. But what'll happen sometimes when I go to export, You'll notice here, these couple images, they got cut off at the bottom, whereas this one isn't. And what happens is when you're going to export, you can't see the whole thing. And what happens is those get cut off. If I, like I said, it depends on your browser settings potentially, but if you run into the same problem, I find if I just go in and I hit control minus, you know, to zoom in and out, then I can see where those bottom edges are so I can frame what I'm exporting better so it doesn't get cropped at the bottom. So that's just one tip that I've discovered that you may need to do, you may not need to. Now, the other thing to keep in mind when doing this is that when you pick something that may have people further back, things like the hands and things like that, it may not hold up during the generation process. So you may have to, one thing you can do to help that is to increase the stop at. That means that this is gonna influence the generation further along. The downfall is it's harder to change the image overall. If you wanna add more things to the scene, things like that, the focus will have a little bit harder time doing that because it's still using that as reference. So you sometimes have to play around with those sliders define what bet works best for you. Okay, and we have our two women sitting on a couch. And if you look at it, it kept the pose for the most part. But like I said, you may have to adjust the stop at and everything, because if you have that at a lower stop at, it's not gonna hold that pose when you go higher up. I don't normally find anything weights above one. I don't use those. So I don't know if they'd make any difference or not. I haven't seen anything that makes a difference when it comes to that. Some you're gonna have a difficult time, that, like something like this isn't gonna be that difficult, but if you take something that isn't so straightforward um, on what it is, so let's go with this image here. Now, if I just put that in there, it may work, but the problem is if it doesn't really understand what it's trying to do for a pose, it, can have a hard time. So you may still need to add more to the prompt to indicate what you want from the pose. Because for example, when I ran this one earlier, I got a lot of weird results. One of the big ones was the fact that almost every single time the purse was facing the other direction and they were kind of warped. So I found I had to add in things like facing camera. That helped focus understand what that pose is and as we can see, as it's generating here, it's constantly fighting. It wants to turn that head. So some of these poses are still, even with 
a detailed model of the pose, you're still gonna have sometimes have difficult. In those cases, it may not necessarily hurt to modify the model, add something like eyes, nose, mouth, just a rough drawing just to influence so that the AI knows what it's doing. Because this one, it just, it has a hard time understanding what that pose is. So even with the perfect pose, it can still be difficult to generate exactly what you want. And that's really where using good prompting can work. For example, we can put a woman lying on the ground in the park, hands under chin, legs up. We'll see if we get a different image. Okay. And as you can see, as is most cases, a good text prompt makes a big difference. So if you have anything that's very difficult to understand, it, it doesn't automatically know just from this what it's doing, but by adding more details to the text prompt, you can guide it so it has a better understanding of what your actual pose is supposed to be. And then you'll get much better results when you do that. Well, that covers what I wanted to show when it comes to Pose My Art, and I hope you found the video helpful. Please consider hitting the like button or even buying me a cup of coffee. I do want to thank the people that have donated because it definitely does help. If you know of any other tools that are good for poses, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and have fun creating.